What can I help you with? Right, uh, <laughs> I know that 53 man rosters, it's an evolving thing, um, including this one, I'm sure. Uh, but what are your general thoughts on the roster that you've put together? Uh, so I've been here three years now, and it's kind of been fun for me to watch the evolution of both the draft picks and, and the college free, ag free agents and, you know, what you're trying to do in the, uh, with free agency. Um, I think from a draft pick perspective, it's kind of been fun, again, for year three for me to kind of look back at 19 and see who's become leaders on this team. You know, and see some of the goals, guys, like even on the third day of the 2019 draft, guys like Max Crosby, um, Foster Moreau, Hunter Renfro, all three of them are leaders now, uh, along with Klee, along with uh, Josh. Um, John's been really good. Trayvon's had his most. So that, that class is, is kind of growing up, and for me that's fun to see them year three. They're, they're growing into men now. Um, last year's group took a little bit of a step up, I think, this year in camp with, uh, you know, two first round picks. Uh, Ruggs came in, a little bit different guy. Um, you can feel his speed more than last year. Um, come on in. How are you, sir? Um, Arnett. I've liked the way he's approached this camp, and I think Casey Hayward's been a really steadying influence on him. Uh, Brian Edwards, everybody's excited about. John Simpson's playing his tail off. And I think one of the cool stories of this camp is Amik. Amik looks like the guy we saw back two years ago in college, both inside and outside. Um, and then this year's group, um, Jimmy Morris, he goes to practice squad, but everybody else is on the team. And there's been some pretty good stories there from top to bottom. So um, that's a long way to say that uh, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's kind of cool to see some of these guys uh, grow up. Uh, it was fun watching this year's draft picks. I think they kind of are who we hoped they would be, but we're still in the preseason, so we'll have to see. Hey, well, we're just, just Sean Reed from the afternoon. Sure. Uh, a few veteran cuts kind of stood out yesterday. Derek Carrier, John Brown, and uh, Carl Joseph is mm -hmm. one back in. Uh, what kind of went into the overall thinking with, with those three guys particularly? Yeah, um, keep in mind that the roster is fluid. Okay, especially, you know, the first 48 hours after this. And I can attest to that as I wasn't a very good player and they often used me as that proxy to get a guy through to IR, you know. So uh, keep in mind that it's fluid, uh, number one. Uh, with those, uh, with Carl, my heart goes out to him. He's a good football player and he's a really good person. Um, I've had the opportunity to be with him twice now in 19 and then again this year. Um, and look, number one, you got to stay healthy. He was playing really well and he played well, but he missed two games. Uh, you got to stay healthy. And number two, we've got some young guys that are pushing hard. Uh, this Teamer kid came in, and I didn't even know much about Teamer. That, that was kind of Gus and his guys saying, Mike, can we get him in here? He can play free, he can play strong, he can even play nickel. And he'd be a nice piece for us to look at this summer. And to my surprise, he's better than that. Um, and he earned a roster spot. Make no mistake about it. It wasn't because of he knew the system. He earned a spot. Um, and then you've got Gillespie, the fourth-round kid, who, you know, he got hurt early, came back. He's competing now. We think he's going to be a really good special teams player And as he learns how to play safety. So for Carl, that he had to be out there competing every day. Um, I think for John, it's, it's a little bit similar. I mean, John is, is, is a speed guy. He's quick. He's fast. Um, he's got to be out there every day competing. And um, again, I feel badly for him also because I just, I think what happens in camp is that those first three guys, the young wideouts, they need as many, camp, re, many reps as they can get. It's not like you've got three veterans who are just kind of taking a certain number of reps per period. I mean, those guys need reps. And we force fed them reps with Dirk. So those three guys are getting force fed into the first team huddle so that we get that rapport going, right? Um, and then you've got John who's fighting for reps, and here comes Zay Jones. You know, and Zay Jones might be in better shape than anybody on our football team. And, uh, and then you've got Willie Sneed, who when you, when you use the term savvy veteran, you know, that's who you're talking about. He can play all three positions. Um, if, God forbid, if anything happened to Hunter, he could step in and run that slot position all day long. Um, so those five guys got the majority of snaps. And, and so you got to kind of knock the door down to get your snaps. And, and when you're not available every day, that's difficult. Um, Dirk has been one of, uh, Carrier has been one of our best special teams players. And uh, we'll wait and see what happens there.
Nate Hobbs, a guy that's got a lot of attention this this training camp, uh, fifth round pick. What, what did you guys go? What was the mindset going into getting him, and, and how happy have you been with him? I'll tell you a cool story, and this is kind of what I think scouting's all about. Um, and in our building, where the coaches are so involved, it's even a better story. Um, so. Uh, I got a call from one of our cross-check scouts after the Illinois Pro Day. And he said, Mike, do me a favor and put your eyes on Nate Hobbs. He just ran 4.45. He jumped 41 inches. He tested better than we thought he was going to test. And I'm not sure if we got the right grade on him. We had a good, we had a good don't get me wrong, we had a pretty solid grade on him. But we, I, I want to make sure he's not getting lost in the cornerback shuffle. So I got off the phone and literally put his tape on right there. And I was like, man. He, he competes, he's tackle, he tackles, he's tough. He's a three-year starter in the Big Ten. He was an outside corner almost predominantly, and he played special teams. I mean, this was a hard-nosed, tough guy, and he just ran 4.45 and jumped 41 inches. So I literally got out of my chair. I spent about two hours watching him, got out of my chair, sprinted downstairs to the second floor, grabbed Ron Miles, defensive back coach. And again, it, it, every building's different. Trust me, I spent... 18 years in NFL Network being in all built all the buildings, and everybody does their jobs differently. Uh, we're a coach-driven building with our scouts. So I run downstairs, say, Milo, get your eye on this guy, please, okay, and tell me what you think today. He comes running back up in about an hour and a half. We got something. He said, I think, you know, this, this kid will compete at nickel. And he was an outside guy, and the reason we thought he could compete at nickel was how tough he was. Okay, his quickness and his toughness. He, he rarely missed tackles. A very aggressive kid. So when you talk about moving outside to inside, that's what you're looking for. A, you got to be a quick processor, which was the we can't tell whether he was or not at, as an outside corner. But B, you better be quick and you better be tough. And he was he was those things. So all of a sudden now we kind of push him up the board a little bit more. The coaches like him. The scouts like him. Uh, we got him on a Zoom call. And he knocked it out of the park. And what our coaches do is they challenge him pretty hard mentally. They give him some of our Raider verbiage, and they push it out and challenge it back. He got all the concept, concepts immediately. I was on the Zoom call. I saw it. I wasn't like I, I heard about it. I, I was on the call. He got all the concepts. The coaches drilled him. He got an A-plus on that drill, and we're sitting back there going, okay, what's wrong with this picture? Three-year starter in the Big Ten, tough competitive every one of our scouting grades on him with with competes and toughness was at a high end so I, I think the cool part for me is seeing it come together it started with the trigger from the cross checker to tell me to get my eye my eye on him it went from there down the milo it then it went to the zoom call and then it was the whole group getting together saying we got to get this guy you know where is he probably going to go league value and at what point do we have to pull the trigger I'm sorry if that was too long. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> that was great. Last year, the defensive line was the Achilles heel of this team. How happy are you with the fact, I mean, it's completely new? Um, I, I feel like the answer to that question is a few weeks away. And, and I'm just being honest with you. And, and you know, I, I played for Bill Parcells, and he always said potential means you ain't done a damn thing yet. And, and I'm a big believer in that. And it doesn't mean that these guys that are with us haven't done it individually in the league. We just haven't done it collectively as a Raiders defense yet. So, um, you know, Baltimore presents a challenge that's unique in this league. And we better be ready to play. That's, that's all I know. Mike, uh, live at linebacker with some injuries. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, a backup tackle. How do you feel about those two positions, and, and is that something that you kind of keep an eye on for both of those spots? Yeah, I think you always do, uh, but linebacker, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, the D-line, we feel a little bit better. Uh, some of the young guys on the back end have played well, and then you get you get punched in the gut a little bit with some injuries at, at linebacker. Uh, obviously, we feel pretty good about the trade we made with Carolina last week. Uh, not only, you know, sometimes coaches, I think, put a lot of emphasis on knowing a system. Right, but not only does this kid know their system, he's been a good football player. So we, we feel pretty good about bringing Denzel Perryman in and adding him to the group. Um, but when you lose Nick Morrow, when you lose Javen White, are we still open for business potentially? Yeah, we we are. Uh, the other position was what? Three tackles. Yeah, I mean we have three tackles. Uh, Denzel has played guard tackle. Um, you know we only carried eight. I would anticipate we would get to nine probably at some point in the near future. Um, I'd feel more comfortable with nine, to be honest with you. But we just thought there was a kind of a cutoff point after eight for where we were. 
Um, so uh, what I really like about our three tackles is I think, um, I think Colton's had the best camp since he's been here. Um, I think Leatherwood is exactly what we thought he was. And uh, Parker's had his best camp. So he's a true swing tackle, which in this league carries a lot of value. Camp, but you spent a lot of time, it seemed anyway, with the offensive linemen. Was there something that you were, you know, kind of get a finger on, a handle on? I, I tell you what's funny. I mean, this is true. My dad was an offensive line coach uh, at University of Penn when I was a little kid before he became my high school coach. So <laughs> I've always spent a lot of time there. It's, it's kind of interesting. There, um, every college practice I go to, every NFL practice I ever went to, I, I, I gravitated towards O line. Not, partly because of my dad, but more because I think that's kind of the backbone of what you're doing offensively. I think everything grows from the let, – let's put the quarterback on the side for a second. That's a special conversation. But beyond the quarterback, I'm a huge believer that your offensive line kind of drives your entire team and certainly your offense. So, A, I love that anyway. And, B, was I anxious to see how Leatherwood was going to play? Yeah. Um, you know, you trade three guys. A lot of people criticized moves, you know, and, and – Cable, me, and Gruden are probably most energized about watching these young guys compete. And that, that's not when I'm, I'm not electing any of them to, to Canton. I'm just saying we're excited to watch these kids compete. Uh, Trey Regis said everybody had so many good things to say about it. You guys got him back. Was there, how much concern was there that you'd put him out there and he'd, he'd be picked up or something? Uh, very legitimate concern. Thought he played really well, um, competed really well. Uh, we like him a lot. Uh, wanted to get him back, obviously. Um, one of the things that running back is that there's usually a lot of them out there, you know, and, and so sometimes you you got to look through, when you look through the cut sheets, there aren't that many guards, tackles out there, you know, but they're, they're the wideouts and running backs are about this long, you know, so you got to sift through a lot. Um, but sure, he put good tape out there. We were worried about it. What is that process like? going through the waiver wire and trying to sift through it all, guys that you might have talked to even in the draft process? I would tell you that I think Dwayne Joseph, our director of pro, did a hell of a job coordinating the whole thing because it is. You're sifting through names. after. So really most of the work gets done in the months before. And then we pull in our college staff, scouting staff also to cross-check games in the preseason. So it's three games this year as opposed to four. But our entire pro staff and our entire college staff are either going to games or grinding tape on it and providing cross checks. So basically, we're walking into uh, the last couple days having every player graded uh, that has been at every drafted and undrafted player that's been in the league the last three years. They're graded, tr- excuse me, graded. Um, all the older players are in our system. So we, we kind of, uh, I sat down last night with all the scouts kind of late and we just kind of we went through the whole list of guys that were available and we pulled out a group by position, could they be potential claims, potential practice squad, or guys we want to track through the season, okay? And obviously we didn't claim anybody today, um, but uh, when we're probably going to make some IR moves today, and that may open up a a roster spot or two. I know Vickers a guy that you kind of kept your fingers crossed a little bit. Yeah, he's a good player inside out, and we feel like we kind of found him in Canada, you know, and that was another good scouting story, and we found them. We developed them a little bit last year, and uh, we love the kid. Want to keep developing them. I understand what you said about potential, Mike, but not just training camp. Going back to when you hired Gus and Ron, Jonathan Abrams been in the building working hard. Yep. How excited are you to see a, a new Jonathan Abrams this year? Jonathan. Yeah, very excited. I, I, I wa- probably watched every snap he had at Mississippi State his last two years. He was injured at the Senior Bowl. I got to meet him a little bit and get to know him a little bit. And really, the challenge for John is to stay consistent at a high level. Okay, he flashes occasionally, big hits. You see the energy he brings to the field. The key is to do that every snap, 60, 70 snaps a game over 17 weeks and then into the playoffs. And John knows that. I'm not saying anything that, that you know we haven't talked about. And I think that's his challenge is to show everybody that he is that guy for the duration of the season. With the practice squad getting increased to 16 players and still being able to have a few veterans on there, how did you approach just building that this squad? Yeah, and it's interesting because they did that last year because of COVID. You know, the, the new CBA said 12. They allowed us to go to 16. On top of the practice squad being loosened up, they've also loosened up the injured reserve and, and return to play rules. So they're trying to give you more 
uh, player and roster flexibility because of the potential of COVID, and they kept those rules in place this year. So you get up to six veterans and four exceptions, and you could have 16 rookies, but you get up to six and four. So the hard part about it is like that old musical chairs game, you know. So um, if you don't make a move quickly, the chairs run out. There's nowhere to sit, you know, and everybody's trying to. So we thought we had a group, good group of young guys. We made uh, offers yesterday when, when, I, when we cut them to, to a lot of them. Um, they've all basically accepted. We knew we were going to have to go outside our group to a few groups, which we have. Um, we've got a full group now. But we've got uh, – and the thing with veterans, as you guys know, is that they're not subject to waivers. So you got to get on the phone with those guys. Most veterans are looking for a 53 spot. You know, not really looking for practice squad, but it's become a little bit more acceptable to the veterans now with, with the rules being six of them and often being an ability to return back to a 53 through, you know, we got a couple guys that, that we're talking to that we're like, hey, get, you know, get in here, show us what you can do. Instead of a one-day tryout, it's a two- or three-week tryout, you know, and you get comfortable with us, we get comfortable with you, and all of a sudden you're on the 53. So... That's a generic way to kind of say, I like some veterans out there. We don't have quite as many as I'd like yet, but I think over a period of time you'll see the, the practice squad kind of take on a form and then hopefully be consistent for the last three, three quarters of, or so of the season. Mike, speaking about the practice squad, a guy that you decided to bring back with the linebacker court kind of being a little thing with injuries, uh, Max Richardson, I yeah. think probably having a lot of the inside ties with his recruiting. Kind of what was your insight on trying to get Max back in the room? Mm-hmm. Um, so the Max thing is interesting because he's one of the most productive college players that we had in our camp. You know, if you look at the number of tackles and what he did at Boston College, um, people that want to knock him as far as scouting are concerned is, you know, size, lack of length, and overall pure speed. When you put the tape on and you just watch this guy come downhill and hit and run, um, you go, that's a pretty good football player. So uh, I have an affinity for him because I know everybody at Boston College because that's where I went to. Everybody stood on the table literally for this kid, so I wanted to get him here in the first place. Um, and I'm hoping that we can continue to develop him on the practice squad because his, his football IQ is really high. Mike, um, when you look at Cleve Farrell moving to the second unit, it looks like um, you can take that one way that he's been demoted, uh, you know, like where he slots on the depth chart. Have you guys talked to him about that? And what, where, you know, what's the thinking behind that? And, and where is he in, in regards to that? I, th I think the thinking behind all of it, and I'm not necessarily about Clee, is that what Rod wants to get to um, is a fluid wave. A way, and that, you know, you look at, pick a team, Philadelphia a couple of years ago when they won the Super Bowl. I mean, they had a wave. They had eight guys that just rolled. And that's what Rod's trying to do. Um, can you guys give me one minute? I was wondering who was going to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, I know you were. I've been on that side. You look happy. Uh, no, no, it's just a continuing saga. But anyway. Okay. Mike, I, I, you, you use the word excited a lot here. I was just wondering if you go back to when you got with the Raiders each September prior to the season yeah. opener. Is this the most excited and confident you've been about a 53 group that since you've been here? And maybe why? Yeah, it is. Um, and But I'm... Um, you know, the first year I was here, I think I was excited because it was um, the, uh, you know, you bring a group of kids in that you, you, and you're kind of nervous about it. We started out six and three that year, I think, or six and four, um, and the kids played pretty well, and we just didn't play well going down the stretch. And I was really excited heading into that season. Young guys played pretty well. It was fun to watch. Um, last year, I was kind of had mixed emotions. I was very excited, but the, the lack of training camp, I'm not sure if people really understand it. And all 32 teams deal with it, right? So I'm not complaining. Please don't take it that way. But it's just a different developmental path for the young guys, right? So, you know, I think the, the most obvious example is our little nickel running around out there, Amik. And, you know, he's playing outside. He's playing inside. We didn't see any of the quickness, energy, disruption, and explosion last year that we're seeing this year. And it's really cool to see this year. It's cool to see the light go on. And a lot of that is not having any off-season program, being confused, playing slow. So last year, 
for me was a little different. I was frustrated because I felt like in our system on both sides of the ball, it's tough on young guys. The volume is tough, especially on offense. It's tough. Um, so no off season camp was brutal. COVID was managing COVID was hard. It was a different kind of excitement. I don't know. I don't think I explained it very well, but it's a, it was a, this year back to kind of normal and I'm fired up and it's part of a being back to normal, but be more just the accumulation of three years. And at this point, uh, my dad used to say, don't worry about whether or not the horse is blind, just load the friggin' truck. You know, and that's where we are. We, we've assembled 53 players. Um, we think we're going to be a pretty good football team. Uh, we're not hiding from expectations. I think John and I would both tell you that we feel like we need to be a playoff team this year. And I don't think there's any doubt about that. And you guys are all going to put that in your headlines, and, and I understand it. Um, but we're not – I mean, that's what the expectation is. We think we've done um, the infrastructure work necessary to put us in position, and we got to take care of business. Okay. Hmm? You need to take that? I'll, I will after this, but thank you. <laughs> I know we've seen various answers uh, about this around the league, but um, when you're talking about roster bubble and you're talking about practice squad guys, the last thing you want is obviously distractions and things that take away from the team. So uh, did you consider vaccination status at all when you're looking at that situation? Um, in, in all honesty, I'm a football guy. I, I leave the medical stuff to the medical people. And um, I think we did a pretty good job within our team in the off season emphasizing knowledge and bringing our doctors in, letting the players make their own decisions, and we were pretty comfortable with where we ended up in the vaccination side. Kind of don't chill on that, Mike, and not a gotcha question at all either, but you had your own battle with COVID during training camp, and you know having to, to sidestep that and bring different guys in and different protocols, did that factor at all into the, the delay in announcing the Denzel Perriman uh, acquisition? And not to, to, I'm confused at the connection. I don't, re, I don't really understand. What, what, I'm sorry. Well, because he's been, he's gone on record before when we were right. the previous team that he was not right. going to take the vaccine. So there'd be more protocols for him to go through before right. coming through. So just wondering if that factored at all in, to the delay in announcing him coming. No, I, I, it's probably Will's fault if there was a delay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else that, I, I, once we signed the player, I'm just excited to work with the football. I have no, I, I didn't even know it was delayed. <laughs> I think you got, uh, so I, uh, I'm trying to do my job as well as you. Hey, thank you. <laughs> we good? Thank you guys. Everybody have a great day.